Nestor Gomez. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Nestor Gomez, give it, here he comes. There he is. Come on, give me some love. He's going to make it. He's going to crowd surf. Spread out, spread out. Give me a little room. Give me a little room. He's coming. Soccer mom. My girlfriend and I used to work together long shifts, 12 hours. And since we were spending so much time together, we decided, what the hell, let's get married. <laughs> I know, right? So after we got married, we put our money together and we decided to buy a, an apartment building. A friend of ours needed a place to stay and a job. So I helped him get a job at the place where I was working. And my wife and I decided to let him have an apartment free of rent in exchange of him taking care of the building, fixing things. So our friend was a handyman of sorts, but he needed attention. He, he needed us to like, keep an eye on him so he could fix things. So my wife and I started to spend a lot of time at the building, keeping an eye on him. But then I realized that my wife was keeping a lot more than her eyes on him. <laughs> so I asked her about this, but she said, no, 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 we just find there's nothing going on. However, a couple of weeks later, she misplaced her phone at work. And I never saw you know, into her phone before, but that day, I was so glad that I did, because there was a text message from our friend that read, I love you. So I confronted her, but she said, oh, it's, it's a wrong number. He, this is a wrong number. He just sent it to a wrong number. Of course, I didn't believe her. So I went and confronted my friend, and I told him to get, stay the fuck away from my wife. <laughs> and get the fuck out of the apartment as well. <laughs> but he continued to talk to my wife like nothing happened at work, you know. And then one day during lunchtime in the cafeteria, I saw them, exchange, I saw them exchanging little pieces of paper. So I knew for sure that something was going on. And then my wife had the nurse to just go and sit next to me like nothing happened. I was so mad, I wanted to punch her in the face. But I didn't because I was raised to believe that a man should never hit a woman. But I have no problem kicking some guy's ass. <laughs> Especially a guy like that. I help him get a job, a place to stay, and then he betrayed me. So later that day, we got into a fight in the parking lot. Because of the fight, me, my wife, and our friend, we all lost our job. Things at home started to get even worse between my wife and I because we started to have a lot of money problems. And she started to spend a lot of time looking for work. <laughs> so I had already been divorced once and I didn't want to get to another divorce because I imagine myself going to meet new people and be, hey, my name is Nestor, I've been divorced twice. Okay, bye. <laughs> So, so I proposed to my wife that we did that. I proposed to my wife that we do that thing that no man ever wants to do. No, it's not a threesome. All guys want to have a threesome. I proposed that we went to see a marriage counselor. She agreed, and the next week we went to see a marriage counselor. But she spent a whole hour blaming me and my jealousy for our problems. The next week, she didn't even show up. So the third week, I called her to make sure she wouldn't miss the appointment. And I even offered her a ride. But she said, no, thank you. I'm already on my way out of the house. But she took almost an hour to, head out, to get out of her house. So you wonder how I know? It's because I was parked right outside her house. When she finally got into her car, I followed her. Not because I was stalking her, we were just going to the same, spice, to the same place. <laughs> but then I noticed that in fact, she wasn't going to the appointment. She drove to her lover's place. So I parked outside and waited. 
I mean, I didn't have any other plans, right? <laughs> Three hours later, they came out of the house. She got into her car, and he kissed her goodbye. How romantic. <laughs> As she drove away, I called her. When she answered the phone, I asked her, how come you missed the appointment? And then she said that she had been looking for a job, going to interviews, and then she reminded me that it was my fault that she didn't have a job. This time, I didn't even argue with her. I didn't want no more arguments. Because I realized that getting a second divorce wasn't so bad after all. <laughs> Thank you.